Hello everyone, I'm Kath Brew from Drawn to Story. I'm an artist, podcaster and educator who illustrates about marginalised experiences for positive change. And I'm here today with Gabriella Inzina, who is a licensed psychologist and online counsellor for expat women. Now, as you know, this month with the FIGT uh, series is where all been looking at loss and grief. Now, one of the things we wanted to really talk to you about was actually loss. And we all know that that sits in a, uh, a complex kind of construct of family culture, uh, your own experiences, generational traumas, all of that stuff. Um, but what we often, we, and we know that grief is the outcome of those losses. But do we actually really understand about what loss is on a minute detail and how it actually can really impact our lives? And so for me, the idea of loss is that it's about the loss of a, a creation of safety, something that you've created for yourself or the something that you associate with, with safety. And for me, the, a perfect example is like you go to a coffee shop one day and you always get almond milk. Who, I don't know who gets almond milk. I don't get almond milk. But basically, <laughs> you go and you, you get almond milk. And the one day you go to this coffee shop, there's no almond milk. And you lose it. Every, emotionally, everything just falls down and you suddenly aren't coping. And you can't really work out why. But it's not about the coffee and the milk. It's about the memory of the almond trees that you always used to drive past in your last country. Or it's the memory of having an almond milk coffee with your best friend where that was a place of safety and but you haven't seen them in three years and you are feeling that loss but you haven't actually acknowledged it to yourself that to me is lost those minuscule micro things and so if you imagine like a, a beaker or a glass of water it's like you drop some paint into it you drop the paint in and you can see it go down and it all muddies a bit and then it settles that's like your emotions you think you're okay <laughs> and then you go to another coffee shop and oh no there's no other milk and another drop goes in and it all gets shaken up again and it all settles and before you know it what was clear water and a little drop of liquid or paint suddenly becomes this in a glass and you've got no breathing space left and you have a meltdown and that to me is what we all experience as expats and globally mobile people is that level of loss and detail that we don't recognize on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So on that note, I'm going to hand to the licensed psychologist to talk about that. More. <laughs> First of all, I love that image and I really, I'm going to steal it copyright <laughs> <laughs> because it's so um, <laughs> symbolic of what happens and, and, and it describes it so well. So thank you for that, Kat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you said, grief is something, uh, grief is the, is the outcome of loss. And we have talked about it a lot in, in different contexts. But loss, it can come in so many different shapes. And what you described, and, and, and I, 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 when you were describing this image, I thought about frustration and anger. Because many people re, uh, um, relate loss like with sadness. Mm -hmm. And also it is about sadness, mm. but there's a lot, there are, are, are a lot of layers of frustration and anger mm. towards ourselves. Why did I make this decision? Why did I move mm. towards others if we move because of our partners? Mm. And also this safety that you mentioned before, it's my God. We we, we live as expats and global mobile, globally mobile, we we live with constant loss. It's a constant state. Mm. Mm. So these little things like almond milk or big <laughs> things like family, yeah. friends, language, culture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we we are I don't I don't want to say unsafe all the time, but it's in this in the verge, you yeah. know. Yeah. So we have to learn how to cope with that and manage it's also, that line, that edge. Mm. And it's tiring. Mm. It's tiring mm. and it leads to frustration and anger. So it, that's something also that I wanted to add to, to that image because as you said, this, this taint 
glass and this boiling pot yeah it's always it's working we 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 function but at some point it's well, going and also, to explode to me it's a slow process so you're not you adjust to it you're not aware of how high that paint is going up or how, how the pressure pot how high it really is yeah yeah you just cope you do and then suddenly like there's nothing left to cope with and it just <laughs> <laughs> like the emoji of the head exploding <laughs> absolutely absolutely and and uh, high functioning mm. because when when we choose this life we know what co- we know in theory at least in the books you know, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah we have to suck it up yeah swallow it because yeah that's my choice so i have to cope and i have to be mm. whatever blank yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. but yeah. it doesn't work like this no so, and then so, and then we put pressure on ourselves when we do blow up because it's like why i should have been able to cope oh, yeah and that that <laughs> stupid word should um but also i think a lot of this around loss is actually a step before that is about mm-hmm. vulnerability and sharing with each other if we're starting to not cope or we may not even be aware that we're not coping but it, it's just that you're finding something difficult like you go somewhere and everyone else knows what that thing is and you haven't got a clue and you're you're on the back foot constantly so that's really unsettling and I think if everyone else is looks like they're coping and then you're not your head's telling you not that can be really damaging absolutely and then and, they and end up at your doorstep <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's it I said let's use the word or the concept toxic positivity but we can mm. we can use something else it's exactly that Am I alone feeling this? I'm on, am I the only one who's feeling uh, loss or anger or, or whatever feelings associated with loss? Mm-hmm. Yes, because everyone else, according to my perception, <laughs> everyone else is coping and is having fun and is enjoying the life, their expert life to the fullest. Yeah. So that adds a layer of vulnerability or sh- even shame. Yeah. Of yeah, feeling the way we feel. Yeah. Yeah. We are not Judging supposed ourselves. to feel this way. Yeah. 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 Is that also very cultural though? Because I always think toxic positivity is such a, a Western thing, like the, the the Western culture of everything has to be wonderful. I mean, is it do you know, is it much more culturally different in other countries? Uh I would say, I, I don't know, I, I'm not familiar with other cultures, so I, I couldn't say, but from my clients from other cultures. I would say no, mm. and but it's a it's a it's a bloody little sample of of yeah, Asian or African yeah. or other uh, not West non Western mm. uh, cultures. Yeah. But this maybe not toxic positivity, but this pressure of to be pressure to, to be okay, yeah. or or for your family, not even for yeah. the society, but for mm. your family mm. or for your friends, mm. you have to be okay. You have to mm. seem okay, mm. because if not, you're failing. Yeah, and also with that that ties into the family pressures of of certain cultures the pressure to have children I want where's my grandchildren kind of thing and and if it's like the lack of doing something is also a loss and then becomes a pressure and all of that so I think it's really important to we like we you said we all know loss is in losing someone a bereavement but loss comes in so many different ways at any level of change really is loss and and to me it's safe space because we don't like to feel uncomfortable (laughs) no no but the paradox is that 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 when we choose this we we sign up for an uncomfortable life in that sense if only we knew before (laughs) it's so different because even we prepare you know yeah Yeah, we we read a lot of things and and then when we are facing that is oh darn absolutely a friend of mine <laughs> keep joking about like the, the one-way ticket that we bought that we didn't really know that we'd bought and actually can we get our money back could we and I'm like nah sorry you've missed the 30-day money back guarantee it's long gone do I want to complain to the bosses are there sorry <laughs> <laughs> and, and I want I wanted to add something to our conversation about decisions mm. because uh this for example this typical decision of should i stay or should i go should i come back to my home country or to another country or should i stay in this country that all that's always linked with loss whatever we decide that's very true. is is yeah. going to be a loss mm. and we again as expats in, in in comparison to non-expats or people not moving abroad we are facing with deci- mm. those kinds of decisions all the time even the almond milk or should i start 
uh, drinking another kind of milk so yeah. so that I don't feel this way yeah. you know those decisions yeah. mean loss yeah and that's True. something that maybe helps people watching because yeah it is part of our life yeah and and loss can be as simple as your phone gets updated they put new software on it and suddenly you can't find your, what where oh your things God. are and you the the order of our lives keeps us safe our yeah. known things and it's like your brain's too full you can't you can't cope with having to process anything extra yeah. so it's yeah. like the phone it just drives you insane and yeah. I mean, my wife's like that being neurodiverse any little change make is highly stressful for her absolutely because she she gets used to systems and she it takes a lot for her to learn other systems so apart from just being globally mobile if you imagine other layers on on that level of loss and change or neurodiversity it's it's <laughs> it has potential so I think we we haven't got long so I think I'd like to to finish just by yeah. looking at reminding people that loss is loss is loss loss comes in all kinds of formats and allow yourself that space to acknowledge it and don't don't be hard on yourself yeah absolutely it's that, that I would say that's the main message of our conversation now huh? yeah. allow to allow yourself to feel whatever you feel give room to those to those emotions and seek help if you need it from yeah. a professional from a friend yeah. from people who know yeah. more or less what you're going through yeah. but don't swallow it don't no. don't keep it here no. vocalize it in any way you can yeah. by drawing by painting by yeah. uh, writing let it and out don't, don't, let exactly it out don't yeah. keep Absolutely. Don't stay with it yeah i think that's um that's why everyone can see all these things that's how i deal with it as well yeah <laughs> really really important get it out and 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 to validate how you're feeling, to not yeah. keep it in and, and shame yourself. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. On that note, yeah, um, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us all. I hope that was uh, a, a snippet of a different way of looking at loss. And we'll see you all online. Bye bye. Yeah. Ciao.